In this video, we will show the deployment of the AngioSeal VIP vascular closure device. These are the accessories that come with the device. A wire, 035 for 6 French or 038 for 8 French. A sheath. This is a modified sheath with a hemostatic valve here at the top and a modified tip, a bit longer on one side and with a little indentation on the other side. The sheath also has two small holes at the end. A dilator. It has two small holes toward the distal end. There's an arrow at the top of the dilator and an arrow at the top of the sheath. The connection is made arrow to arrow and you should click them together. You should be able to hear the click in any case, you'll definitely be able to feel it. Now the holes of the dilator are aligned with the holes inside the sheath. You don't have to flush this prior to the procedure, but you can if you want to. The device comes in a foil pouch. Open it first so that it's ready. The pouch has two arrows at one end, indicating where to open it. This little piece is called the bypass tube. It covers the anchor and protects it from dislodgement during delivery. It is called the bypass tube because it bypasses the hemostatic valve on the sheath. And this is the part you will grab to load the device into the sheath. There are three steps to follow when deploying the device. Locate the artery, set the anchor, seal the puncture. Now, let's start. The patient's head is on my left and the femoral access is on the right. Insert the guide wire for the sheath exchange. Position your fingers to hold pressure as the sheath comes out to maintain the wire position. Now coil the wire once and hold with your thumb and forefinger. Grab the sheath and dilator by the tip and load these two together. Continue holding pressure in an overhand position. Advance your sheath and dilator down into the vessel. If you encounter some resistance, rotate the sheath 90 degrees clockwise and twist it until you don't feel the resistance anymore. Always rotate it up again so that sheath markings and arrow are facing up. There's a small hole at the proximal end of the dilator. As long as you have the green arrow on top pointing up, that hole is pointing down and it will cause pulsatile flow downwards. If you have this inverted, you could get it in the face, so be careful with that. Once you have pulsatile flow, that means you located the artery, and the holes in the sheath and dilator are inside the vessel. We don't know how far in we are, so we gradually take the device out until we lose that pulsatile flow. And now the holes have come outside of the artery. The flow has stopped. So now advance the sheath again, no more than one and a half centimeters until you have pulsatile flow again. Now we are back in the artery. Look at the letter on the sheath, which indicates your depth. There's one centimeter between each letter. It's a kind of marker to help you assess how deep you are in case it were to come out or move. This step is called locate the artery. Change your hand position. Put your supporting hand on the patient, holding the insertion sheath steady without moving the system into or out of the artery. With the right hand, you grab the dilator, bend it down and up to remove it together with the wire. 
and then pull so that all come out together. Carefully insert the angio seal carrier system by the bypass tube into the valve of the insertion sheath with the arrow on the handle facing up. Insert the carrier system close to the valve with short movements to prevent kinking. Advance the carrier system until the cap and the device sleeve snap together. The two arrows must be aligned and you should hear a click. This first click means that the anchor is out in the vessel but it's floppy. While the left hand remains still holding the sheath, grab the angioseal device cap and pull back. A next click will tell you that the anchor is locked against the tip of the sheath. The white marker should be exposed on both sides. This step is called set the anchor. Now that you've had the second click back, you can release the left hand and place it on the patient for support, with the insertion sheath between your index and middle finger, but without friction. With your right hand, pull the cap of the device at a 45 degree angle. You will feel some resistance as the anchor is at the other side of the arteriotomy. Now I add a little water and pull the device back. You will feel some resistance because the anchor is pulled against the inner artery wall. The collagen expands in contact with blood and fluids, so in this case the water is doing that. You keep pulling and now the collagen is exposed and a green tube will appear. It's called the tamper tube. Gently push down the tamper tube to the collagen while always keeping tension on the suture until part of the black marker appears along the suture. The pulling and pushing should happen at the same time. This is called the pull-push technique. The black marker tells you that the collagen is completely compacted down into the arteriotomy. Hold this position for 10 seconds with a little bit of forward compression on the green tube. After 10 seconds, you can release the tension. This step is called seal the puncture. Before cutting the suture, make sure there's no hematoma forming, no bleeding, because at this point, you can still compress a little with the tamper tube. The first cut should be made between the black and the clear markers. When all is okay, remove the tamper tube. Holding the suture, push down on the skin and cut.